What's up everybody, it's Sean here, back today to give you guys a review of the New Balance 2002R Mule in this rain cloud and marblehead colorway. Today's video was brought to you by Hefalux. Hefalux is my all-time favorite sneaker insoles, and they sell ETPU insoles, which essentially is the same material you'll find in Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to check out their website, which I've linked down below in the description box. You'll see they sell a variety of different insoles, so depending on the type of insole density and the cushioning setup you're looking for, you're gonna find there's a suitable pair for anyone. So I've been a paying customer of Hefalux for years now, and to me, I personally find them to be extremely comfortable. So if you guys wanna check them out and try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and get 15% off your entire purchase. So this is the mule version of the very popular New Balance 2002R silhouette. Dropping recently here in Canada, these released alongside a Phantom or Black colorway as well. Both pairs retailing for a price of 150 Canadian dollars, which is roughly about 110 or 115 USD. So the official colorway for this shoe is Rain Cloud and Marblehead, and the style code for this shoe is M2002RMA. So this one, just like your regular 2002R, is not a made in USA or made in UK New Balance shoe. This pair specifically is made in China, and for obvious reasons, this is pretty much identical to a normal 2002R, except of course it's backless, and it's worn more like a slipper or a slide. So if you guys are familiar with a normal 2002R, for the most part what I say in this review is pretty much spot on with this pair as well, but either way let's dive into the details and I'll give you guys a closer look. So on the toe box, the base layer here, this is covered in this grey colored mesh material. Right above this, we have this gray colored Nubuck with a New Balance N logo embroidered in the center. We have this reflective 3M layer on the medial edge. And overlaid on either side, we have this darker gray colored Nubuck. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this light gray colored suede, which has a very hard and scratchy feel to it to the touch. This same light gray suede covers the entire mid panel of the shoe. And stitched on top of this, we have the New Balance N logo with an outline embroidery in white. Moving downwards, we have more of that same suede which wraps around the back of the shoe. And you'll see for the back panel, the suede here is perforated. Running down the center, instead of your traditional tongue and laces, in this case we have this large suede panel running down the center, which is perforated halfway down the bottom. And on the top we have this oval shaped cutout, revealing this red colored New Balance running branding. And on either side of this suede panel, we have this grey colored knit material. The interior of these mules is covered in this soft grey colored textile and like I mentioned before, this pair is backless so we have about a 1 inch coverage from the bottom of the shoe to the top and that's pretty much it when it comes to heel coverage. As for the insoles however, these come with your normal foam line insole, it's lined on the grey colored textile on top and we have New Balance running branding stamped on the heel in dark grey. So the upper of these 2002Rs sits atop the same midsole as found on your normal 2002R. So this is primarily an Absorb foam midsole, and it also incorporates Absorb SBS technology as well. So the majority of the foam is painted in white, but the heel portion is painted in grey, and they also incorporate New Balance's SBS technology, which can be seen on these gel-like pillars found on the lateral side of the heel. And this helps with impact protection and shock absorption. And then finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, here we have your normal 2002R outsole. So this is entirely constructed out of a black colored rubber, we have these flex grooves on the forefoot to give you added flexibility along with this diamond shaped traction pattern and underneath the rubber in the middle we have what New Balance calls their stability web technology and this is essentially a TPU shank plate which helps with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these 2002R mules and for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like pretty much all your other 2002Rs so whatever size you normally wear I'd stick with that same size for this one. So for me, I found that these ran true to size, so I got these in a size 10 and they fit me great. I was also able to try a 9.5 in the store, and I feel like if you're going sockless in this pair, then maybe the half size down might be the better option. But if you're going to be wearing socks for these, then for sure, I'd stick true to size. The one thing I did notice though, because this pair is a laceless pair, it didn't really feel that locked in at all. Even compared to other slides or sandals that I have, I'd say that the lockdown was pretty subpar. Maybe a part of it is just because I'm so used to how 2002Rs normally fit, so when I toss these on, I kind of expect that same sort of lockdown, but instead my feet just don't really feel like they're set in place. So I don't know if this is just me, if you guys are able to try these on, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. Moving on to the comfort, so the good thing about this being a 2002R mule is that it still has the same exceptional comfort of the 2002R. What I mean by that is that it gives you a good balance of softness and support, 
you're going to feel that absorbed foam underneath, but there's still going to be a ton of stability and support as well. Minus, of course, the fact that it's missing a heel, but in terms of the underfoot feeling, it still feels very well balanced. And as far as mules go, I'd imagine that this is a pretty comfortable pair. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and craftsmanship, so this is the part that I was a little bit disappointed in. Even though other 2002Rs are usually made in China or Vietnam, I felt like the quality on this pair was lacking quite a bit. The suede, like I mentioned, had a very scratchy feel to it, and it almost felt more synthetic than normal. And not only was the material quality lacking, I felt that the craftsmanship was a little bit rushed as well. There were quite a few extra long threads throughout this pair, and the paint job on the heel was a little bit sloppy too. So all in all, it wasn't the best from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, which was a little bit disappointing. With all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. Personally for me, I'm not a huge mule or slipper kind of guy. Yes, there's an occasion for me to wear slides and sandals and things like that, but I don't think I'm the type of guy that can pull this off casually just for everyday use. My first thought when I saw this was that it looks kind of incomplete. The forefoot kind of looks just like your normal 2002R, but then it's just totally backless, which just throws me off completely. I don't know guys, maybe I'm just not stylish enough, but let me know in the comment section down below if you guys think you could pull this off casually. What are your overall thoughts on this 2002R Mule? And when these drop in your country, are you planning on picking these up? Or is this a straight pass for you? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on my Instagram account at esco8. Check me out on Twitter as well at sean.go. And visit my website at seangoca So until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it helped you in some way. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one.